like a future goal you guys like have talked about or have something in mind yeah uh it's funny because we were literally talking about this <laughs> like as we pull up here yeah <laughs> Welcome everyone back to the podcast. We have a special guest, which is Corey and Caitlin. How are you guys' day so far? Hey, it's been good. It's been good, yeah. We've just been hanging mm-hmm. out and went to uh, Huntington Beach and um, Newport Beach today, so it was pretty chill. It's been a very chill day. Wow, Went crazy. shopping, yeah. And I know you guys were doing like a photo shoot too as well. How was that having to do it? Was it a couple photo shoot or was it more of a single photo shoot? Yeah, so one of my friends, she's um, in marketing for a company and she asked me mm-hmm. to be the photographer, so she kind of like mm-hmm. gave me a little photography gig. Um, so we got to basically shoot the product and specifically we're shooting this um, like healthy like type of shot mm-hmm. that you um, can drink right before you have coffee um, so we like did some shoots with um, at a coffee shop too yeah, yeah. went to some new places mm-hmm. coffee shops brunch I don't know, it, was, it was fun it was just yeah about the immunity shots so mm-hmm. like tennis. yeah yeah and cool cool if you guys don't mind asking like how'd you guys get like how'd you guys meet and all of that yeah, totally. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. uh, Caitlin and I met in a uh, church that we go to, mm-hmm. um, and actually one of our uh, mutual friends, uh, Anthony, set us up on a date. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. We had a double date. Um, it was at, like, this uh, pumpkin patch mm-hmm. festival thing. and Fall date. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's really how it all started. It was back in 2015. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Crazy. So it was, a, it was a while ago, but I, uh, mm-hmm. I actually... I think it was 2016. Was it 2016? When did you leave for Estonia? I left for 2016. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and But yeah, and then I left for Estonia. And so we oh, built wow. a solid friendship before I left, but I I was gone for like three and a half years. Dang. And, uh, but during that time, towards the end, we started picking back our friendship up again, mm-hmm. like really well. And yeah. And that's when I really wanted to move back to mm-hmm. keep dating Caitlin. Yeah. So, I mean, I thought he was really awesome when we mm-hmm. got to go on our first date, but... Yeah, he did end up moving um, to Estonia a few months later. So we kind of kept up a friendship throughout the mm-hmm. years. I remember at one point, mm-hmm. I wanted to get advice from him because I was thinking of going on a one-year challenge right. with our Crazy. church, which means that yeah. you spend mm-hmm. a year in another country or state serving the church. And that's what mm-hmm. he was doing in Estonia. Um, so I just remember reaching out to him as a friend. And mm-hmm. we've kind of stayed in contact here and there um, through like Facebook and um, but yeah, at one point he was like, hey, like I'm coming back to California. This was like in 2019. He's like, I'm coming mm-hmm. back for the summer. Like we should um, hang out sometime. And so we ended up getting coffee and it went really well. Really well. <laughs> really well. <laughs> yeah. 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 I I really like saw her extremely attractive and it was really fun to kind of like go back to be like, wow, like we just like connect really well i felt mm-hmm. like the conversation just kept yeah. on flowing yeah, it was again. Natural. Mm-hmm. uh even after like that whole gap period uh and so i really wanted to keep in super close contact we actually did some virtual dates um, yeah while i was out in estonia yeah, it was uh, fun. which is yeah actually kind of helped us out when we were um long distance dating because of covid mm-hmm. everybody was you know in their own houses and yeah date but we already were used to it yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) so it it really helps build our friendship a lot Mm -hmm. wow and i wanted to ask you guys like what was the biggest challenge of just that long distance relationship was it coming up with new activities or Mm. question yeah i mean honestly like long distance can be um have a lot of great benefits um, because you can definitely focus on your own time, your own friendships, and still have that like dating aspect mm-hmm. in that friendship with each other. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely, it comes with its difficulties, and I think the biggest one would be him not physically being here, like when mm-hmm. we have, um, you know, like events, or we're being invited mm-hmm. to a birthday, or a family event, whatever, or a dance. Um, just not having him there is just a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, definitely. I think also the time difference i was oh, 10 wow. hours ahead that's true yeah and so if we wanted to hang out uh i i would wake up around like six or seven in the morning yeah Ooh, it was like see, 8 yeah. p.m for me yeah. and then we would start like talking yeah she would be tired because it's the end of the day and i'd be tired because mm-hmm. i'm just waking it's up so true yeah. or it would be really early for me on the weekend and then mm-hmm. it's like late for you yeah mm-hmm. so that was definitely difficult because we had to really plan out like when we're actually going to talk um mm-hmm. Yeah. I was gonna say like how, I know you're mentioning you guys like met in church and things like that yeah. like what are like 
how is the dynamic different from someone that is outside of the church? How would you guys kind of like look at that mm. for the relationship? That's a good question. Um, I think for me, there are things that stand out that are really important to me because mm. I, I wasn't raised going to church. Mm. And so for me, when, uh, when I did want to start dating Caitlin, I think the things that I started thinking about that were, that mean that were meaningful to me, things mm-hmm. that I that I really desired in a di- not only a dating relationship mm-hmm. but like a future mindset. Mm-hmm. I don't think I even had that. I think yeah. there were a lot of things that never crossed my mind until uh, you know I started having a relationship with God and started you know wanting to build a relationship mm-hmm. with Caitlin. Uh, I think there was a lot of things that yeah would have never crossed my mind as far as like what is important to me, what do I want to have in a future partner. Um, that I, I, at least for me, never yeah, really yeah. came across my mind. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, yeah. that's it for me. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think for mm-hmm. me, I've never, I grew up going to church, you know, all my life. So mm-hmm. I haven't really like dated anyone like outside of my church. But um, what is different for me is my mindset as well is, you know, mm-hmm. I am looking for someone who is spiritual and who is focused on growing with God and can mm-hmm. lead me spiritually. So I think that did play a part in me mm-hmm. picking someone that I wanted to date. You mm-hmm. know, I, I obviously I had standards for character and for, um, you know, qualities that I wanted in someone, but I think the most important thing was that they were growing with God. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I know you guys are mentioning about like future and the mindset, which is really encouraging and exciting because it kind of makes it brings energy to like a relationship. But what is like a future goal you guys like have talked about or have something in mind? Yeah. Uh, funny because we were literally talking about this <laughs> like as we pull up here yeah <laughs> um we've been we've been going through uh you know financial peace university mm-hmm. um because well we want to be really wise with our finances mm-hmm. but also at the same time we i want to marry her <laughs> mm-hmm. so so when i talk about you know my future goals it's that um and just wanting to plan wisely and um and again like plan to you know have this amazing friendship and partner mm-hmm. so yeah literally as we pulled up we <laughs> just got to talking about it yeah yeah let's exactly. go Dave Ramsey mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah you guys are good yeah I mean that's exactly what we're trying to do is like we're trying to focus on well both of us are focusing on our career goals too mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. pursuing like what we want to do this year I feel like this is a big year that we're going after those dreams and God mm-hmm. has been uh, moving a lot in that but I think also making sure that we're saving we're financially stable mm. um yeah and then just god like controlling like our future together yeah. and, you know with marriage too crazy yeah. and then on the career side of it what do you guys if you guys don't mind me asking what are you guys like pursuing what is like a dream that you guys are trying to chase yeah. after maybe your own business or maybe just a career yeah yeah um actually i just got a new job um Ooh, congrats mm-hmm. thank you yeah so i'm doing i'm now joining the marketing team um in the uh, consumer goods industry specifically mm. with like a healthy food company um, mm. and I will be you know helping to assist the marketing manager which is crazy because I actually went to school with um, for healthcare administration and oh. um, yeah I, I ended up doing an internship in healthcare I ended up working in healthcare and I'm now leaving my current job as an executive assistant so that's crazy. what I was doing before yeah a lot of event planning and I really liked it mm-hmm. but I realized that I also have a passion for creative, you know, I have a creative outlet and um, I've done a little bit of marketing with our church, you know, I've helped with the Instagram a bit and then I've also done it for other projects as well, like mm-hmm. a social networking app that um, one of my friends like owns. And so, yeah, I, I realized like I want to get into marketing and mm-hmm. I decided to make that career shift. I've been thinking about it for a while, but this year I finally made that. So I'm really excited for it. Yeah. Wow. And I want to like a little bit on that is like, how was that transition from going from the previous job to like marketing? I'm mm. sure there was some fear of leaving something that you were very mm. familiar with. Mm. Definitely. Mm. <laughs> and I think like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am someone that like when I'm comfortable with something, I can stay with that. And I think, mm. you know, I stayed with this job for a while because I was comfortable. It was reliable. Mm. And I worked with awesome people. I actually worked with a few of my really close friends. Um, but then I realized like, okay, I'm ready. Like I desire to go after more of my passion and my dreams. Mm. And, you know, I really had to change my mindset of, okay, like I can't let fears hold me back. Mm. 
Mm. I just have to focus on my end goal and my dream and know that I can't get there. I just need to take steps. So it was little by little. I, you know, I was, I had to have a lot of humility and I had to get a lot of help from other people. Wow. I reached out to HR managers I knew. I reached out to friends that were working in marketing and they all gave me wonderful advice um, leading up to my job interviews, even sharpening my resume. They helped me yeah. with that. Um, so it's just, you know, it helped to ask a lot of questions. I like get a lot of advice and make those steps for it. You should crush it, man. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy because, uh, like you were mentioning earlier, you're kind of doing your own thing with projects and all that. And it's like, wow, you really have something that's a gift from God of like the marketing. And to see you kind of go after that, it's pretty unique. And it's fearless because a lot of people don't want to really go ahead and go forward because they're like, man, like you said, comfortability. But you kind of mentioned it too. is like being humble about it and then seeking advice because right. it's like, oh, I don't know if I want to ask for advice for this because I'm not too sure either. But, you know, yeah. thank, you, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And you were going to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I think she did an amazing job of, like, going after it, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I definitely saw, like, you know, the times of, like, you know, fear and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just to see, like, where she's at now, she just had her last day at her last job yesterday. Crazy. She starts her first, like, first day on Monday. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's just it's really real. cool to see, yeah, all that come together. Yeah. And, and I was going to say, for you on your career path, I, yeah. know you, I don't know if you're still trying to do, like, your own coffee shop. Is this mm -hmm. something that you still want to pursue? Yeah, so, okay, yeah, when did, when Bro, did that we was talk like, again? Man, that was like uh, three months ago, maybe? Three months ago, was, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I do want to do coffee. Uh, right now, I'm being, I'm getting some training in next week to actually start learning how to roast. Mm. So, the coffee shop I'm working at is going to be um, building a, like, a loft area on top of, like, where all the... The customers will be yeah and so that's where the roaster is gonna go and so I'm gonna be heading uh, that project for uh, the coffee shop and hopefully mm -hmm. yeah start going down that path when it comes to coffee um, I also I don't know if I mentioned this last time maybe I did mm -hmm. but uh, I'm getting my real estate license as well mm. and so I just finished all my courses um, and I'm waiting on my exam date which is in May um, but in the meantime, I have been uh, looking into different brokerages, getting mm -hmm. some interviews in, figuring out like what I what brokerage I want to go into. Mm -hmm. And so the ideal goal is to roast early in the morning up to like 11 mm -hmm. uh, and then go right over to the brokerage or go into real estate mode until like five or six. And just just grind, grind it out. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and eventually I want to be able to transition to real estate solely. Or at least you know just manage a team uh, for the coffee roasting program while mm -hmm. I am doing real estate as more of a focus so that's like my overall goal with all of that yeah that's crazy I wanted to ask you guys like you guys have pretty busy schedules as it is as well like what tips would you offer to people to kind of balance everything out because I know you guys you know <laughs> it, it, yeah I'll let you guys answer it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean I think it's really knowing how to manage your schedule and prioritizing mm -hmm. Um, like even for me, I already had a busy schedule. Um, you know, I was working, mm -hmm. but I was also doing a little bit of social media marketing for um, different groups. And, um, you know, I have my small group as well uh, for church. And so when it came to even wanting to prioritize job searching, you know, that takes time and takes discipline. Mm -hmm. um, but I really had to make sure I carved it out in my schedule and was committed to it. Mm -hmm. So I bought myself a new planner and I think that helped a lot. Um, just yeah like scheduling those times where i commit to each thing you know i know that having a bible study with someone is important i know that getting advice is important um meeting with married couples to help a relationship is important mm. so i think just knowing that there are things you need um in your life that you need to like be committed to and mm. um yeah just make sure that you make time for that in your schedule yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's That's totally will second that um there's a there's a book that I've been reading about um, just yeah how to you know go about life with high energy, mm -hmm. uh, and one of the concepts that it talks about is uh, you know a thousand minutes a day. We only have a thousand minutes per day, and uh, one of the things that it talks about is how can we like use every single minute as um, as almost currency. Like this is mm -hmm. like valuable to us, mm -hmm. um, and so by using every single minute. Uh, for something that is beneficial uh, mm -hmm. not just for like a career but I think 
you know, taking time to invest in yourself, like whether it's just to go out for brunch or, you know, to go and work out, you know, those are things that are going to give you high energy to keep you going Mm -hmm. and not just constantly grinding. And I think a lot of people might just get in this mode of, I just need to work, 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 Mm -hmm. where like investing in yourself, like getting your workouts in or, you know, going on a little date, those little times are investments back to you to get energy. And so for me, just to have a really solid structure, you know, timeline or, or days or weeks, uh, but also knowing that I could have some time here just to invest back into myself before I invest into my girlfriend, uh, whatever it is that gives me more energy to keep going. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important. That's true. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, guys. And mm-hmm. I was just thinking too, kind of like earlier you guys were mentioning the conversation you being like you came into the church later on and then you grew up in the church my curiosity is like how did god or jesus came into your life like what made you be like all right i want to look into this like what made you kind of want to pursue him and commit to him yeah um awesome uh so (laughs) i believed that there was something growing up my my grandparents were catholic um and so my mom was raised catholic um, my dad was raised atheist or, you know, his, his, his parents jumped around to different things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so really when I was growing up, I never really went to church all too often unless I went to my grandparents' house, but I did always believe in something and, uh, and it didn't really like click for me about like, you know, what I do with that. Like, okay, there might be a guy, but you know, mm-hmm. I don't know what to do with that mm-hmm. information. Um, you know, what is that going to change in my life if there is or if there isn't God? Um, and that didn't really change for me until, um, until later, like I think like more towards once I hit, um, a senior year of high school, mm-hmm. um, I definitely started feeling a lot just towards, you know, my actions and mm-hmm. like, why, why do some actions lead me to feel just regret? Mm-hmm. Um, why do some of my actions lead me to feel like hurt and and why do I continue to do it even though mm-hmm. it could also hurt other people um, and yeah definitely just didn't really know like what to do with it all and I was searching out for a church I was searching mm-hmm. out for a group but I just felt like I wasn't getting any like answers like I mm-hmm. felt like just it just wasn't like nothing was solidifying for me and so when I was in college again I tried to look for a church but again, it just nothing I felt through. Like I felt like I had a lot of answers uh, or a lot of questions and no answers. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it wasn't until I met you know this guy. His name's Gabe Strobel. I don't know if you guys know him, mm-hmm. but he he sat down with me and he was like, "Hey, like, I want to help answer your questions with these things." I'm like, "Okay, sure." So I came with like a list of questions, <laughs> and uh, and I remember that he, this was the first time that I feel like somebody sat me down and go through scriptures mm. to answer my questions, not wow. just tell me what the answers are. Mm. And that for me was a lot more powerful because I think a lot of people were just telling me like, oh, you know, you you know, you're if you believe in God, then you're good, or like, oh, hey, you're going to church, you know, that's awesome. Um, but there was nothing that was just like, you know, just was complete mm-hmm. um, and a lot of those scriptures uh, just help really fill in those voids that I was that I was like going around doubting or questioning about who God was mm-hmm. and I think the biggest thing for me was just you know the life that God has for me mm-hmm. um, if I let these other things that really just was holding me down and that's what I think is more important about like oh like you know I'm just gonna give my life to God I think it's mm-hmm. also important to know that the things that I'm leaving behind are really the things that are holding me down from having a fulfilled life mm-hmm. like the things that I'm leaving behind are the things that actually were hurting a lot of people were mm-hmm. hurting my relationships were hurting me mm-hmm. and uh, and those are the things that Jesus didn't want inside of my life and until I realized that I needed to let go of these things and now where my life is at now, it's like, I'm not going back. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's so much more of a fulfilling uh, life than I think, and I hope people don't think that it isn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, I really don't feel tied down. I feel like it's, it's the best decision, mm-hmm. so. 
Wow, thank that you for sharing for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think it was just a lot of like, just asking questions and even for you too, like you came with the heart to want to know more. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like the best part is having that and being ready to like seek that out. Cause I feel like it's easy to be someone that's closed off and not want to approach it, but you wanted that, that curiosity helped a lot. And I think mm-hmm. it kind of made you more rooted in Christ. Mm-hmm. But yeah, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think for me, I, I, you know, I grew up differently. Um, I grew up going to church all of my life. Uh, my parents are actually part of the same church as us. Um, but yeah, I think I remember um, believing in God since I could talk. And I remember my parents would pray with me every single night when I was a kid. Um, and I just knew like I was praying to God. Um, and even when I um, went into the youth ministry and I, um, I would go to baptisms um, in my church and I was always inspired like one day I will get baptized one day I will become a Christian as well Um, and you know but I had a lot of knowledge for sure I knew exactly what to say and and I knew to quote things in the Bible even at a young age Um, going into my teen years though I of course was very drawn to um, things in the world and I was drawn to uh, wanting to look good in front of other people and so Mm. I also became very a little bit rebellious with my parents we would argue a lot Mm. um i would hold a lot of a grudge and bitterness in my heart um when i felt hurt and i Mm. wouldn't talk it through and i would yell at my parents a lot and i remember there was a time where you know i was just a young teen and i had a lot of tension with my family and i didn't feel very close to some of my friends um and so you know in the teen ministry um i looked at other girls who were living their lives for God and who had great relationships with their family. And I thought, man, like, I really want to get there. I really want to, um, you know, be who God would want me to be. And I don't want to have to feel guilty about my life, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. Because I knew I wasn't doing the right things um, in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. I was hiding a lot from my parents and, um, you know, just not being very obedient. And so when someone, one of the girls asked me, like, do you want to study the Bible? Do you want to learn... Uh, more about how to apply your life to the Bible uh, I was excited for it and Mm -hmm. I started doing that and realizing um, there were things I weren't really living out even though I knew that you know we should love one another and we should forgive one another I wasn't living that out Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't always being honest and um, pure in God's eyes and so I studied the Bible and I uh, decided to make that decision to really commit my life to God really live it out for the rest of my life and not just be a little wishy-washy, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I got baptized when I was 15 years old. So it was a young decision um, for sure. But I think I look back and I see like, you know, 10 years later, like God has still taken care of me Mm -hmm. in my life and blessed me with a lot more. And I don't desire to have the things of this world because I feel like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, God gives us a really fulfilling life in Mm -hmm. him. He Mm -hmm. promises a lot and takes care of us. And so... Um, I de- definitely don't regret like making that decision um, and I mm. think still to this day though I make mistakes and I'm constantly growing and I think I'm just grateful that I have the grace of God to like you know yeah. know that I don't have to be the same person that I was yesterday Amen. Mm-hmm. crazy I know you're mentioning about uh, the desires of the world for people that uh, aren't really familiar with that how would you explain that like pursuing these desires and things like that mm. yeah um, when I say desires of the world I think it's just things of our fleshly nature, I guess, Mm. Um, things that we naturally want, um, but maybe it's not in God's plan and God's Mm. will. Um, Mm. I think, you know, when I talk about, um, like, God's will, it's whatever is in the Bible and Mm. whatever God commands us. And some of his commands are hard, you know. I think (laughs) we can, the world can quote scriptures and be encouraged by it, which is awesome. But there are also Mm. hard scriptures that Mm. are difficult to obey. Um, You know, like, love your enemies, um, forgive one another. Um, don't hurt like don't hold grudges against each other and so I think things like that like that is definitely of God and it's not really our fleshly nature to forgive and to love Mm -hmm. and to have grace but that's who Jesus was and so I think you know I had to give up my worldly um, and my um, fleshly like nature Um, Mm -hmm. but I think it's also freeing um, to be able to live a life you know that's not stuck to these things um, or desires but um, living for God instead Mm. Wow, that was that was 
good stuff mm -hmm. and i wanted to ask you guys what advice would you have for somebody that's curious about god like what would you tell them if they're like i'm thinking about studying but i kind of don't want to what would you mm -hmm. how would you and you know kind of instruct them or advise them with that yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah i think the most important thing uh when it comes to you know seeking out after god mm. um is yeah i think i think it's definitely just going in there trying to find god um mm. Mm. i think if you go in there with a doubtful heart or a uh, uh like a like a heart of like you know prove to me mm. and i mean mm. I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like say that god won't show himself in that because i right. think god works in any way mm. in miracles and all um but um, in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, it really talks about how if you seek me, like you will find me, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm here. Like it, it talks about how he listens to us, um, and I think that's really important when it comes to searching out after God. I think there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of things that um, nobody can really give you the answers to. And really when it comes down to it, every single decision or every single thing that you believe in mm. comes down to faith, whether you believe in God or not. Um, and for me, when it came to believing in God, I saw more truth mm. than anything when mm. it came to um, actually trying to seek out after him, after truth. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, go in there wanting to hear from God, going in there wanting to know who God is, and God will answer that. It, mm -hmm. it literally mm -hmm. says that he will show himself to you. Um, so that's that's what I would say. That's awesome. Yeah, I would, I would go off of that and, and just, you know, I would encourage anyone who is wanting to learn about God, whether you know nothing about him or you want to learn about him or you're doubtful of him, I think, you know, like, come with that humility of, yeah, I, I don't know, or I want to grow. Um, mm. And also pray to God, ask mm. him for guidance because mm -hmm. God is there and he wants to help you find him. So mm. if you are looking for him or you want to learn more about him, pray to God. Even if you have just a mustard seed of faith, a tiny seed of faith, um, just believe that he can help guide you there and, mm. and then go to trusted people that you know that is living out Christ and ask yeah. them questions. And don't go in it with like assumptions. Don't go in it with like, um, you know, a background of mm -hmm. what you might know. Mm -hmm. But ask them like, hey, can you show me like in the Bible more mm -hmm. about God? Um, and try to grow in your faith through that way. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I, I did want to go back, which was a really awesome point that you were talking about. Like, there's scriptures that encourage people, like for people in the world, but there's also scriptures that are very hard to live out. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, like, on that tip, I wanted to ask you guys, what is a scripture that was very difficult for you guys to like follow mm. recently? Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, I think for me, the the thing that it stands out first um, is a scripture in. Um, in 1 Corinthians where Paul is talking to the church in Corinth and he's explaining to them how he, even though he was raised as Jew of the Jews, he became like everyone else just to try to win over a few. He became, if those who were poor, he became like those who were poor to win them over. If he cool. met a Gentile, he would become a Gentile even though he wasn't raised a Gentile just to save them. And so to see his humility and just to throw himself away, to put himself into the shoes of those who just need God, um, who wouldn't know God, mm -hmm. you know, just to see that was insane. And for me, being out in Estonia, that was like the scripture for the last, mm. for that three and a half years. How am I going to put myself into the shoes of this completely different nation, you know, <laughs> it, it, Estonians, mm. Russians, Lithuanians, whoever I was Crazy. there with. Um, how can I put myself in their shoes? What are the things that they felt? You know, what are the experiences they went through? And that has has transitioned itself to, you know, the dating relationship I have mm. with Caitlin. You know, I need to put myself away to put myself into Caitlin's shoes to mm. see how she feels, to see, like, mm. you know, what mm. she thinks about um, because it's no longer just about me, but it's this partnership. Mm. And it's the same mm. thing when it came to just studying the Bible with people or having other relationships with people. Paul chose to deny himself so that he could reach to the other people. That's and awesome. that was 
is so hard mm. for me <laughs> to do because I don't want to like I want to live for myself. Like I yeah. want to. I, I think I know what it looks like, <laughs> right, but it's right. not always. So that was so hard for me to do, mm. and still to this day, it, it could be a challenge. But it's mm. you know, it's it definitely helps. Mm. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that was awesome scripture. I like that one. So. Yeah, I think for me. Um, I think it's Matthew 7.33. I forget if it's 6.33 or 7.33. And it talks about um, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Mm. Yeah, six. Okay. Mm. Um, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well. And it's talking about how we can, you know, God's telling us not to be anxious about many things. And, um, you know, if you read the whole chapter, it's talking about, like, you know, look at the birds of this air and um, how I take care of them and I feed them and, what about you? Like I, that means I will totally take care of you, uh, my children. And so I think for me though, I am definitely a planner and I, you know, I'm always forward thinking. Um, and I can worry a lot about everything turning out the way that I would hope it would. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is something that I have been thinking about in this season of life of mm -hmm. my future, whether it's my career or our relationship mm -hmm. or my living situation. Um, and just, growing and having trust that God is going to take care mm -hmm. of all those areas. You know, I just need to focus on seeking him first, you know, serving him. Mm -hmm. um, but that has been in this past year, like a little bit of a challenge that I've had to mm -hmm. grow through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of like on off of the challenges, what uh, I'm sure you guys had moments in communication where there was some issues. How did you guys resolve them with conflict and resolution within mm -hmm. your relationship? Mm -hmm. If you guys don't mind sharing. Yeah. Totally not. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, you know, it really helps us. We've learned because we've been dating over like a year. It's a year and four months or three months. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had to learn a lot about each other because we come obviously from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so we also have different communication styles and different right. needs. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm learning like I can't hold on to my own expectations or assume that he knows what I'm feeling, what I want or what I need. Um, so learning not to assume, but ask questions, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think for me, like I'm learning not to be critical, but to be curious um, mm -hmm. and care more about Corey than just always my feelings. And obviously he wants to care for my feelings as well, but I need to communicate that to him and not expect him to know um, what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And so even when it comes to conflict, like we have different ways of dealing with conflict, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. for me, I know that when I have conflict with someone, I can't really like I'm emotional or I'm mm. upset and I can't really yeah. be in the right mindset to like maybe hash it out right away. Mm. But for me, I'm like, okay, mm. let me just take a few minutes and go pray. Maybe I need even like a night to just go home and, um, you know, if it's getting like, yeah, more intense, like I think like mm. um, I need to reach out to a trusted person in my life. Mm. Um, I have a mentor um, in my church that I go to and she's awesome because, you know, she knows both of us and she knows yeah. me. Um, and she helps me to grow, but I think like sharing with her too, like this is all I'm feeling and do you have any advice, you know? Mm -hmm. But also always going to God, you know, first and foremost mm -hmm. of, sure. you know, like I want to be righteous. That is my desire. God, like work in my heart through anything um, and help me to be able to communicate mm -hmm. um, well with Corey. And so I think for me, just learning that I need to um, go to trust people in my life, go to God and also understand that we need to give each other space, you know, um, mm. before we solve it. Yeah. yeah. This is just funny because I'm the opposite where I just like, I need to, we need to settle it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like you, like yeah, we're you, you, my mind goes everywhere. Like, oh man, what's she thinking? Like, oh my mm. gosh, what's going to happen? Like, yeah. I just start getting anxious. Uh, and so for me, I'm like, no, I just really want to settle it now. And, um, and I have definitely just needed to like, yeah, really humble out and just like learn that man, Caitlin needs this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's better for me if Caitlin gets that yeah. time too. Um, definitely. Because then it gets me to, again, like, you know, do the same thing that, that Caitlin was doing. Pray, mm -hmm. get some advice, talk to other people. And I think that's so big when it comes to communication, especially in a dating relationship, mm -hmm. is to have it like an outside third party to have people like that are really close to you to talk to mm. to vent to um yeah i think that's something that we've also been learning is like you know we're not just trying to like throw all our feelings mm. and vent to each other yeah. like, mm. um because yeah it's you know 
we, we do want to grow together, but at the same time, you know, there are people in Caitlin's life that are so much better suited to helping her and aiding her mm-hmm. than I am. And to have those people in your life, to have that kind of friendship, I think is so necessary. Uh, it's just to have like a very fruitful, like vibrant, like relationship that doesn't have a lot of quarrels yeah. or conflicts. But when they do come, then yeah, just understanding each other's like, you know, like ways of dealing with conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how does that person you know, deal with conflict? But I think also just having open communication communication is everything just even talking about it mm-hmm. like me like hey like you know i know we're going through something but i just need you know support mm-hmm. or like like you know mm-hmm. hey i still love you yes affirmation right yeah. just still like being like hey i still love you right i just need to get some time to talk to some other people or to pray yeah. um or just uh yeah i mean like hey let's let's talk about this you know in a couple hours or maybe we need to you know talk the next day but let's get a plan. You're going to talk to this person. I'm going to talk to this person. And then we'll come back together. And we will talk about this again. Mm. Uh, you know, taking conflict head on is just so important. Like, don't mm. sweep anything underneath the rug. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy stuff. There's like, so far on the podcast, there's so much good advice you guys have been giving for like mm. the relationship standpoint, even with the biblical standpoint, which I think is awesome. Mm. But I wanted to ask you guys, I know 2020 was a crazy year. Now we're entering 2021. What is one goal you guys have in mind for your relationship? Or it could be even individual as well. Mm. Yeah, great. Um, you want to go? Um, yeah, I mean, for, okay, for individual, um, I am excited to pursue my career mm. and see exactly um, where God is leading me in that. I would hope that in the next year, I gain a lot of experience in my new company. Um, mm. I gain a lot more skills and continue to grow my security in God. Um, that is something spiritually that I want to grow in is knowing that God is going to take care of my future. I can be at peace. I can laugh at the days to come, you know, like the scripture says in um, Proverbs. But like, I think um, just having peace that life is life is hard, but it's also awesome because God is in control. And so I think this year, I just want to grow in being secure, mm-hmm. growing in my career, um, and in a relationship, you know, Something that I personally want to grow in our relationship is trusting um, that God is leading the relationship and trusting Corey because mm. at the end of the day, like um, Corey is leading the, the relationship and he's awesome at it. Sometimes I can get insecure, I can get fearful, or I can want to take things into my own hands, but mm. that's not, you know, like that's not trusting God. Um, right. Obviously, he's a godly uh, man. And so if he's trying to grow with God, if, he, if he's trying to grow as a leader in our relationship, like I got to know that, mm. yeah, okay then I just have to focus on my own character, my own growth. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I could second a lot of those things. I think starting, you know, my real estate career is huge. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been really excited getting into it. It's really fun to learn. It's all about real estate and finances. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, been a, it's been like a, a new hobby, I guess, for me. Just yeah. something that I just find mm-hmm. myself doing, researching a lot about uh, this marketing or the market and, everything so to be able to start that is a huge goal for me Mm -hmm. um and for me even personally uh i think um and caitlin is just definitely someone who helps me out with it it's just yeah taking things head on Mm -hmm. uh and not shrinking back um because i think for me just to be able to you know not be shy or Mm -hmm. for me not to be timid when it comes to just different things in life, whether mm-hmm. it's a, you know, push for a job, push for, uh, you know, um, better pay, or mm-hmm. to push for, you know, yeah. something that is going to increase, you know, the the part, the best parts yeah. of life, mm-hmm. um, you know, increase our relationship in that kind of way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, I think that's something that I can definitely grow in, uh, mm-hmm. is just being able to take those things head mm-hmm. on and not shrink back from it. Um, and obviously hopefully marriage <laughs> but yes. again that's something that we were talking Amen. about before we got here so, <laughs> Crazy. so we still we still need to talk about those things but <laughs> <laughs> but um but no um i i definitely see a future in our relationship and those, we have goals to keep going for that so. mm-hmm. that's awesome and um 
Was there any shout outs you guys wanted to do before wrapping up the podcast? Oh, yeah. She has a list. <laughs> <laughs> um, like for people or? Uh, um, yeah, it could be for things that you're promoting currently with even like a brand or some projects that are coming up for people to know about or just even people you want to give a shout out that you feel you got support in your life or your relationship and stuff. like. It's, it's really up to you. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited because I am trying to grow in digital marketing um, mm. and I'm working with a few different um, groups and, um, you know, soon we're going to be launching this app called Pure Match, which is mm. a, um, it's an awesome app to connect like really, um, you know, like-minded Christians. So that's mm. coming out soon. And then um, also I, on the side, do like a little bit of like, I work with brands with my personal Instagram, which is cool. Um, that's been something that I've been doing as a hobby. Mm. So you can definitely check out my Instagram because I share like home decor and fashion. Mm. Um, and I even talk about my faith and just my life. So um, awesome. that would be my Instagram, Caitlin Lauren. Cool, cool. And I'll put that also in the description uh, for both of you guys too to make it a little oh, easier. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There yes. you go. I'm giving cool, my cool. own shout out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come visit me on Instagram at Corey C. Pittman. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I think for sure I want to give a shout out to Mike Hill. If he ever even like hears this or sees this, this guy literally like helped me get my feet grounded when I came back from Estonia mm. uh, with a job, a place to live. Awesome. He mm. has been just a long lasting friend inside the church, a uh, really faithful companion and brother. Uh, honestly, like this guy is just like amazing, and I'm so grateful for that guy because I feel like where I'm at now, it's like I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been uh, without mm -hmm. him. So, mm -hmm. give a shout out to him, um, and yeah, I think that's the main thing I would want to say. Awesome! Thank you guys for coming on the podcast. Yeah, yeah thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. It was awesome. And I'll be wrapping up for today. Awesome. Cool. Good stuff, guys. <laughs>